Welcome again. Without further ado, let's see what this course is about. We live in a universe of matter. And the matter that we see and interact with is organized in extremely complex structures. Now, we don't understand everything about the structures, of course, but the laws of nature that we do understand tell us that this was not always the case. So the composition of matter evolved with time. And in fact, as astronomers, our job, in a sense, is to understand this evolution from the Big Bang to the present day. In this course, we will cover in detail one very important component of this, uh, which is the thermonuclear history of matter. In other words, we will learn things like uh, where do all the elements come from, why they're organized in their observed abundances, and how these abundances evolved with time. As a first step, we must understand the abundance data itself. So let's start with some definitions. What do we mean by the term abundance? Well, simply put, the abundance of an element is a measure of how frequently it occurs in a given environment. Now we must be a bit careful about how exactly we define these terms. For instance, let's consider a box of a given volume and then let's just count the number of particles within this box. Now, in this example, it is clear that if expansion or contraction occurs, then the number of particles will also change as a result. In order to avoid this perpetual bookkeeping, uh, it is more useful to consider the number of particles of species J per unit of some conserved quantity. The nucleon number is such a quantity because it is conserved even at the relativistic limit. So a very common definition of abundance that we will use is the so-called abundance by number, which is simply the number of particles of species J over the total number of particles in a given system. Experimentally, however, this choice of normalizing to the total number of nucleons has a disadvantage. Because this involves the sum over all species, errors in species of large abundance dominate. To minimize such problems, it is traditional to express elemental abundances by number with some normalization. For instance, it is very common to fix the total number of hydrogen atoms in a system to 10 to the 12 and then measure elemental abundances relative to that. Of course, because 10 to the 12 is a large number, we also very commonly use the logarithm of that. Another definition that is used very often is the so-called abundance by mass. Simply put, this is the amount of mass of a given object that is in the form of a given element. For instance, uh, for the sun, we know that about 71% of its mass is in the form of hydrogen, we call this capital X while 27% of its mass is in the form of helium, and we call this capital Y. In astronomy, all elements that are heavier than hydrogen and helium are amusingly called metals, even though most of these elements don't actually have metallic properties. So for the Sun, we know that the sum of all metals is about 1.5% of its mass, and we call this capital Z. Finally, it is very common to report abundances relative to solar abundances. This is because we know the composition of the Sun relatively well, at least compared to other stars. 